Today we're diving into polyproduct titration curves. So if you already understand basic titration of strong and weak acids, we'll proceed to polyproduct acid titration. So what is a polyproduct acid? It's an acid that can donate more than one proton. And it does this step by step. A great example is carbonic acid, written H2CO3. It has two acidic protons, meaning two dissociation steps, and two pKa values. The important thing to know is that the first proton dissociates more easily. It's stronger acid behavior, with a pKa around 6.3. The second proton is weaker, harder to remove, with a pKa near 10.3. That means the acid gets less acidic with each proton it loses. Now let's look at what the titration curve of carbonic acid would actually look like. You'd see two buffer regions and two equivalence points, one for each proton lost. As you slowly add a strong base, like sodium hydroxide, here's what's happening. First, H2CO3 donates one proton to become HCO3-. This forms your first buffer region centered around pKa1, where the solution resists pH change and the curve flattens out. Eventually, you hit the first equivalence point. All the carbonic acid is converted to bicarbonate, HCO3-. Then, keep adding base. Now, bicarbonate, also a weak acid, starts donating its proton, forming carbonate, CO3-2-. This forms your second buffer region. Finally, you reach the second equivalence point, where all bicarbonate is fully converted to carbonate. In summary, each buffer region is centered around a pKa. That means at the half equivalence point, pH equals pKa. The acid gets less acidic with each proton removed, so pKa values increase successively. At each equivalence point, the dominant species in the solution changes from the acid form to its conjugate base. Multiple equivalence points, or plateaus, indicate you're dealing with a polyprotic acid. Finally, the number of equivalence points equals the number of acidic protons.